In the last session, we saw the architecture of the recurrent neural network. Uh, we saw some um, uh, small examples of how you can use uh, RNN to solve certain problems in the natural language processing. Uh, today, we'll look a little deeper into the uh, RNN uh, to see how it works and so on. All right. Okay. So in this uh, class, I'll be talking about back, back propagation through time. Uh, we usually call it as BPTT. Uh, and then we look at the uh, derivatives and then see how we can back propagate the errors and then train the network uh, in the recurrent neural net. And then we also look at what is meant by perplexity. Later we will look at exploding and vanishing gradient. Uh, we also look at a small technique in terms of uh, uh, clipping the gradient to solve the exploding uh, gradient problem. And then later we introduced a new uh, mechanism by which we can solve certain problems exposed by recurrent neural network. We call it as a LSTM or long sh short term memory cell. Uh, we will see the forward pass and then how we can use LSTM to address some problems uh, that we faced in the uh, RNN. Uh, we also take one small example in terms of generating a sequence uh, through LSTM. And then later we look at another uh, modification of the RNN called uh, gated recurrent unit. Uh, we will see the diagram of that and then see how it works and then close this uh, session. Right? Probably have to read a lot more to understand this. Rather than just listen to the, listening to this lecture, you also go on and take a look at uh, recent papers and pa papers published in this particular topic to see how they really are addressing the vanishing gradient problem in the back propagation through time and so on. So, we will just look at some of the uh, important thing that you would see in all the neural networks. I am just going to be refreshing this again to you. Uh, we are going to be looking at some activation function and their derivatives, right. So, we use the activation function to control the values of the hidden layers, output uh, layer values and so on. You remember that. And then we also take the derivative when you want to do the back propagation, we take the derivative and then take the uh, values back and forth so that we can train a neural network. So, we have seen a few activation functions. Uh, one is a sigmoid, right. And then we also saw tan h or hyperbolic uh, tangent. Uh, we were looking at two different uh, mechanism of uh, finding errors and then trying to use that to reduce the error during the back propagation. One is using the uh, cross entropy and then second one is uh, the mean square error, right. So, all of them should have the uh, derivatives so that you should be able to continuously uh, do the back propagation in order to train a network. So, why are these uh, functions chosen? Uh, these functions are continuous in nature okay, and they are differentiable. So, if you do not have a differentiable function, you cannot use it as an activation function. So, that is the reason why we choose some of these uh, functions as activation functions. For example, the sigmoid is 1 over 1 plus e power minus x. right? So, if you want to uh, take a derivative of this it is equal to sigma x into 1 minus sigma x. Okay. And then if you want to differentiate uh, the hyperbolic tangent function, it gives you 1 minus tan square h. Uh, it gives you 1 minus hyperbolic tan square x. Right? So, it is continuously differentiable. If you take the sigmoid, it goes from 0 to 1. Uh, if you look at the hyperbolic tangent, it is from minus 1 to plus 1, right. So, you have, so I have to draw it cleanly here, it should be like this, right. So, you have 
good amount of space where you can differentiate it cleanly right in both these functions all right so that's the reason why we uh, look at the activation function which are differentiable it's very important to have a continuous function uh, for you to use in the uh, activation uh, for you to use it as an activation function okay and then let's look at the derivative of uh, this you know we saw it as a formula let's look at it through the graph then you will understand it even more better uh, we have the sigmoid right like this and then we have the derivative in red so you can see that the you see the derivatives are available in this regions for you okay and then if you look at the uh, hyperbolic tangent function you have the derivatives again in this region so it, ideally if you have all the values in these places you're going to have a derivative for back propagation and so on okay uh, so we aim to keep our values in these places okay all right so once we have a good continuous function uh, we can use it for our uh, forward pass to really change the value between either minus 1 to plus 1 or 0 to 1 depending on whether you choose a uh, uh, tan hyperbolic tangent function or sigmoidal function okay so now let's look at the forward uh, pass in the recurrent neural network so i have given a very small and a simple uh, model for you to understand this so we have the input coming in as xt at time slot t and then the input values are conditioned by the matrix W that connects the input and the hidden units and then we have the uh, hidden units getting the value by using the dot product of W and XT and then we have a, an ST that represent the state of this uh, neuron hidden neuron uh, which is computed using the xt and then we have an matrix connecting or the weights connecting the uh, state of the hidden neuron and the output neuron okay so we have a net value computed here that's called uh, is a t and then we do a soft max and then get our classes right and then later we find the error between the uh, value that we computed and the gold value that we have added as the standard or the target output okay so the difference is computed using the uh, yt hat and the gold value that we have set earlier okay so now look at the equation that we have so let me take off these so ht is computed using wxt and u is the one that connects the previous hidden layer and the current layer right so or we can say it as a previous state and the current state so this one represents the previous state of the hidden unit and then this represents the current state of the hidden unit so we have some value that's coming from the previous time slice that we have to incorporate into this so how are we going to do that uh, first we will find the state of the current one okay first what we do is we find the uh, current state of ht using the input and the w and then sum it with the u the one that is connecting the previous state of the hidden neuron and the current state and taking the previous state value of the neuron hidden neuron right so by doing that you get the value of 
h here. So, we compute the value of the current state of the hidden neuron using these two, right. Okay. So, what next? So, once we have computed the current state of the uh, hidden neuron, so we use a hyperbolic tangent function to get the state of it. Okay. The state is translated between minus 1 and plus 1 using a hyperbolic tangent function here. Okay. So, in all this you should also you know not just think in terms of the uh, variables here, but look at it in terms of how the matrix or vectors look like when you move from the uh, input to the h t and then what happens uh, in the state and then when you multiply with the vector again uh, with the matrix again to get the z t you know you just look at it or visualize it in terms of the matrix in your mind when you do that. And then also when you use a, an activation function there you know that the values are mapped on to the values between minus 1 and plus 1 if you use a tangent a hyperbolic uh, tangent or they are mapped between 0 and 1 if you use a sigmoid. So, it is nothing more than the set of values between 0 and 1 or minus 1 and plus 1. Okay. So, just keep that in mind whenever you do this <coughs> and then we compute the value of z that is the state of the net uh, output okay, at time slice t using the weights connecting the state of the hidden unit here and the output neuron. Right. So, now we compute z t using v and s t here. Okay. So, we got that and then later we obtain the computer output using softmax. So, what softmax does is again it maps the value that you obtain in the z t between 0 and 1. right? So, so, it also distributes the value in such a way that the sum of all the values would be equal to 1. So, you can say that this is also doing the job of a sigmoid. right? So, the values are going to be between 0 and 1. 1 in this case too, but with the only one condition all the values when you sum up they become equal to 1. So, that is the only uh, condition otherwise it acts like a sigmoid function. Okay. All right. So, once uh, the output is computed we now have to find the error. right? So, we know the target so, we also call it as the gold standard uh, which would be let us say y t and we have y hat t now and we need to find the error and then minimizing this error is going to really give you the uh, equilibrium state. You know when you start minimizing it and then when the value no longer changes you understand that the network has reached the state of equilibrium. Okay. That is the very ideal situation, but we stop at some point usually you know when the value between the previous state error and the current state error is uh, equal to a very small value we stop that. So, that is the uh, way we compute the error here. So, once we compute the error now we have to push the value back through the network. So, that the error is learned, the weights, the error is learned, uh, what is the meaning of that? When we say we are learning the values of v, w and u are adjusted. So, those are the parameters that we are going to be uh, looking at in terms of reducing the error of the entire network. So, when we say E t theta that means it includes u, v and w. So, this is 
for only one small uh, set. Okay, so, here we have considered uh, the neurons in the hidden layer in the horizontal fashion when you unroll it. Right? It is also possible that you can have neurons stack one above the other, meaning there are multiple layers between the input and the output. So, here there is only one hidden layer, I can have more than one. So, and then I can uh, x through this. So, when you create something like this, you have when you unroll, you are going to be like So, this is how you can actually add more layers to that network. Okay. So, what is the advantage of adding more layers uh, to the uh, neural network? You remember we showed that in the XR problem by just adding one more neuron in the hidden layer. So, we are able to solve the nonlinear problems using uh, two neurons there. We are able to solve the XR problem by adding one more additional neuron in the uh, hidden layer. So, by adding more and more so, you are actually increasing the capability of the neural network to solve problems uh, which are lot tougher to address using the normal operations. Okay. And let us see how we get to that place. Okay. So, this is one simple uh, network where we are able to compute the error using the uh, forward pass here. So, then we have to do the back propagation. Uh, we have to find the value by which we want to update the v, we want to find the value by which we want to update the w and then we want to find out the value or some delta value using which we can update this. And then you are not only having this, you have more of this on your side. right? And then you have to take those values across as well when you make the updation in each of these weights. Let us let's look at first the complexities of this and then in terms of the size and then move on to the uh, back propagation part. Okay. So, let us assume that we have uh, t words in the vocabulary. That means, uh, uh, we are going to be providing the words one word at a time and they are going to be t words. It is the total number of words in the corpus, I am sorry not in the vocabulary. Okay. So, that will be given one at a time. So, we have t words in that. Uh, x t represent the input word at a time t and d w that we have here is the dimension of the word vector. Suppose, uh, you are inputting the x t in terms of the word. right? There are two ways you can do it. One is you can actually input the word vector. So, when you input the word vector, the vector uh, will have some elements. So, usually as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can take 50, 100 or 300. So, the dimension of this would be uh, 300 in some cases or 50 in some cases and so on depending on what you want to do. All right. And then if you are considering a one heart vector, then the size of x t will be equal to the vocabulary size. right? Why is it so? If you are considering 100 word vocabulary, so each word will be represented by the index right? and then uh, for the first word number 1 will be 1, rest will be 0. So, we will have 100 elements in that. So, it, this particular value will be equal to d uh, v if you use one heart vector. Okay. So, keep that in mind. All right. So, next is the one that connects the 
uh, hidden unit and the uh, input vector. So, the size would be, so we have decided this size either it will be d w or d v and h is the number of neurons in the hidden layer will be given by this number. So, this is a matrix that contains uh, d w into d h elements right and all of them are in the real space and then u is another uh, matrix which is coming in from the uh, hidden unit to the hidden unit. So, which will be a square matrix which will be of size d h by d h okay. and then v is another matrix that connects the state of the hidden unit and the output uh, neuron and that will be equal to v by r into d h. So, since we are connecting it from the hidden layer, this size will be the one of the uh, sizes will be d h, the other one will be equal to the, the vocabulary size. right? So, since we are using the softmax, so it is going to be spreading the entire probability across the words. right? So, that means, if we are going to have the size of v there. So, this is what we have and then S t minus 1 is the output of the nonlinear function that comes from the previous state. Uh, the output that we have here will be of size r v. Okay. Okay, this is clear. So, this is the size that we are talking about. The, va the values of uh, v, w and u are shared across. So, you will have only one u, one v and one w throughout the uh, implementation. All right. So, give you an idea of uh, how big it will be. Let us take some small example. If you assume the size of the word vector to be 100 and the number of hidden neurons as 500 and the vocabulary size is 10,000. Okay. So, the weights connecting the input and the hidden units is going to be of this size 500 into 100 and then the size of the or the state size would be equal to 500 into 1 and then u would be 500 by 500 and then v would be 500 into 10,000 and the y t value would be 10,000. So, this is only for one uh, unit that we are talking about this right. So, when you do the uh, when you unroll this you will have several of y's correct for every uh, time slot there will be an y t. This will not change this will not change. these things will not change, but there will be a change in this. 